Hey doing everyone, welcome back to Neural Fantasy Analysis. We're going to be going through a couple of things in this video. Firstly, we're going to go through and show you how to possibly loop Tago if you unfortunately missed out uh, on having him in your starting side or on your bench. If you look at my head-to-head -head team here, we have Tago in the in emergency number five, which is um, obviously frustrating, but thankfully he was uh, in that five jersey. And, and what you should do, guys, just going forward, with guys that you're um, not sure you know, how they're going to go. Um, but if they play early in the round, you pop them in the five jersey. And you know, if you happen to have someone that doesn't play or you have a red dot on your team, you'll be able to get him um, as a playing player if you want to. And, and if not, you, know, you can you can bring one of the guys up into you know, the four, three, two, or one jersey on the interchange there to help you out. So um, I suppose the other thing is I've decided to wear a shirt today. Nah, who am I kidding? Shirt. I don't even think I'm allowed to, to wear one of these anymore. With uh, with last night's live stream, um, <laughs> being as it was, a lot of people talking about their, you know, getting the guns out and everything. So I never know if I'll be able to ever wear a, uh, a shirt again. So that was a bit of fun, guys. I appreciated that. Everyone who tuned into that, if you haven't um, haven't seen that, it was with the you know with with Ando, uh, Andy there and um and TK. So get around that. But plenty to talk about in this video. If I wanted to do the loop, there's only Four players that I would have in my mind that I'd want to um, you know, trade out and bring in so that I could get Tago's uh, score, right? So at the moment, I have no red dots, so no one non-playing, and that's the only way I'm going to be able to get Tago's score. So obviously, you know, this is going to be helpful for guys that are fairly beginner, but these are things you can do in round one you have, when you have unlimited trades that you can, um, you can move players around to get certain guys that you're looking for. Okay. Number one, I'd be looking to try and get uh, Harry Grant, who's only out for one week, right? So my issue here in this team is I have Damien Cook as vice. So I can't trade out Damien Cook. You see he's got the lock uh, next to his name. So he can't be traded out. But if he wasn't your vice captain, for example, you could straight swap him to Grant. And then you would have, um, you just, all you have to do is move Grant to the interchange and have him in one, two, three, or four. It's not going to matter. But you put him over there, Randall on the starting side. You would then uh, not get obviously Grant's zero. You, would, you wouldn't get his zero, but you'd get your fifth uh, fifth emergency player to come in and play. So that's a simple one there. Someone that a lot of us want in our team, and that's a good way to get a 61 points anyway, which you would be hoping for with having Grant anyway. So that's the first one. Second one is Cam Munster. He's someone I'm super interested in, obviously at that decent price as well. And you would have to trade someone you know pretty high. Uh, in terms of price in your team. So the only only guys I could trade for in this team would be Crichton, a 757, um, would be the hooker as well, uh, in Damien Cook, you know, Payne Haas, but I wouldn't want to do that. So they're the three, uh, the three guys that I'd be able to trade out for Munster, for example. If I wanted to trade Crichton, let's say, which I could do, I would then have to move, uh, let's say, Madison up to mids. So I'd have to put Tuolangi into the edge position and then have Munster on the in interchange. That's number two. Number three, I would be interested in having Latrell Mitchell, which might some people might be interested in. With that one there, can we do anything in this side? Mitchell is, what, 670? Is that right? 671. So with this team, with only 16K in the bank, I couldn't trade Pap to him, for example. I'd have to do anyone from Madison, Ben Hunt, um, Crichton as well. And then you could trade your hooker again in that one. If you were to do any of those guys in the mid or the edge, again, could move to Alungi into there. But that, the other thing you, you, you're losing here would be some cover. So I wouldn't, basically the thing is here, don't blow up your team just to get that, um, you know, to get that 61. It's a very long season, guys. So yes, that, that 61 is important. But remember, even if you haven't played him, you know, you played Billy Smith over Tago, for example, you played Penasini over Tago, they have the opportunity to get a 50 or 60 as well. So if you would blow up your team and then they get a 50 or 60 also, and you get the exact same score, basically, then that's a bit of a waste. Um, you know, you've, you've got him on there. You're going to get his price rises, and you know, if there does happen to be someone that doesn't play, even if you, you know, just let's, let's just say Pap isn't ready, for example, you could then have someone. You know, unfortunately, in, in this team, we only got Sean Russell as cover. He'd have to go up. Uh, sorry, he, he'd go into starting side. Pap, we can move up into the interchange and get Tago's score anyway. So that's something to think about there. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's basically don't blow up your team for it. The only other option I would do, and this is a little bit different, and that is Kobe Hetherington. So he should be only out for this week, and he's someone that a lot of us are interested in. We have him as the dual mid uh, and also hooker cover. And I was having a look at this in my squad. So I think that would um, probably help me out a little bit. I was 
you know, thinking about this, um, if you watched the team reveal vid video yesterday, you would have noticed that I am not, I actually really wanted Matt Burton in my side, and the only person I'd trade out from this is Madison, just with his role being a little bit unclear. So there's a few things that um, that I decided that I could do in this situation. And one of those things was to remove Madison from the side. And let's just have a little play and see how we can get Hetherington in and then get Tago score. So this might um, help, you, help you guys out a fair bit. So let's just say we have Madison out. Someone that we could easily put into that position. And the only way to, to be able to do this... I felt, anyway, was to be removing um, Smith out of my team. If Tago is going to be really good, which we'll speak about a little bit later in, in the scoring and, and how he got to be 61, and if we think it's going to be something that's worth, you know, very sustainable, I think that I have enough cover with a bird, for example, and if I was to bring in you and Aiken, for example, that would be the other theory there. Where's Aiken? There he is. Cool. So I bring in Aiken, right? What I could then do is trading, what did I say? I said Smithy out, how did I do this? Um, from there, I wanted Smith on the edge. Okay, how did I do this? I moved Crichton to there. Okay, from here, I moved Aiken to Tuolangi, so puts him on the interchange there. And then we can move Smith for Aiken, for example. Okay, so we now have you know, a couple of guys in the center. Unfortunately, not a lot of cover now in the mids and the edge. But what I'd do from there is to move Billy Smith out of the side. And because I have that extra bit of cash, I have that 459, I'd be able to get Kobe into my team. So we're going to have a look at what this does to our cover for example. The Kobe moves in there. So we'd be able to have, leave him in the one, two, three, or four spot and he's someone that we could use next week and, and, and someone that you know we're probably looking to pick up at some stage over the next few weeks anyway, right? So Hetherington comes in there, which is cool. We're gonna get Tago's score now and I actually have 83k remaining. And if you remember to the team reveal, I was actually thinking about trying to bring in Burton into my squad. So I could remove either Bird or Aiken out of the squad here and pick up the great man. So let's just say we went for that little bit extra money. We could trade Aiken up to Burton. And that would be cool. So we move him in there. 593. Why the hell is he the only one that doesn't have a a, a player profile or, or a head there? Cool. So that's the way you could do it, guys. That's a pretty simple example. And, and we look at our squad and do we do we lose out at all? At this stage, we, we now have someone that is going to be, you know, hold, uh, uh, sorry, looking after a team in terms of the dogs. You saw what O'Sullivan did last night. If dogs have any kind of decent games like that, then, you know, that's kind of what Burton's going to be doing, right? And he's going to be goal kicking as well to add to that. So he has a couple of nice games to start, and he's someone that I'm pretty interested in having in the side. Okay, so that's that there. We get a little upgrade there. We obviously have a downgrade, um, yeah, an upgrade at center, but a downgrade losing Madison up top. But we're going to get that 61, which is really cool. And there are a bunch of guys that are covering really well in the, obviously, the mids and the edge. We have cover, you know, dual position in guys like Crichton and Bullymore. We also have, you know, Bird that can move up to the edge if we needed to. And Kobe Heatherington's covering the mids, as well as, the you know, obviously, Kurt Mann that can cover a few spaces as well. So that's that there. Leaves us with 30K and, you know, getting that 61 so you don't miss out. The only other thing to think about, guys, is... In the rules there, you can have you know ten, uh, two guys, for example, just say uh, Pap doesn't end up playing. You could um, obviously, if we find it out really late, and uh, have the did the Eels play by that point? It's a question. Do, do, do. Eels, no, Eels play late. So Eels play after Storm, for example. Anyway, if Pap doesn't play, you can move him out for Russell, which would be fine. Or if he if he um. If you don't happen to see it and, and he gets a, a red dot in there, then you would get Russell's score anyway. Okay, so he would come in as the, the straight wing fullback and then you get still get Tago's score from Hetherington anyway. So just be aware you can, if you have enough guys that can cover the positions, then you would get multiple, multiple if you had two red dots, you'd get both scores, for example.
just be aware of that. If you've got multiple red dots on your interchange and you've got the other, the, the green dots, or the green, if you've got the green ticks, for example, of guys that are playing, then they'll get that score as well. So that's an option of what you can do, and I might be actually interested in keeping that as I, uh, I get that addition of Burton. And I don't need to have Billy Smith, for example, with, uh, with Tago being strong in, um, in that situation. Other issue there is the fact that I would then be using Crichton as my only cover for the center position with Bird and Burton there. And you know, on the on our bench there we only have you know we only have the Tago. So doesn't change too much for me. And I think you get that 61, which is pretty cool. Alright, let's move on to that first game and, and the scores involved. So I hope that made sense to you guys. If you're not sure, watch the video again and, and see how I did that, because it's only really something you can do in round one um, when, when you have unlimited trades and you can move people around fairly comfortably. All right, my thoughts on this game last night. Did not expect the Panthers to come out and kill it. They played so well. The Eagles, not so much. Um, yeah, just, just couldn't really get anything going, but Panthers were just awesome and, and really took over the game. We see Sean of Sullivan uh, having a 74-point outing there. It was awesome. So 385 kick meters, which is very, very normal next to Jerome Luai. Running the ball a little bit, a turnover tackle, a forced dropout. 28 tackles for one miss is awesome for a half. Uh, and then a couple of tri assists and three line break assists. So really the perfect game. He literally only had the one missed tackle in terms of demerits. So he, he's someone that is priced at 575 for a reason. When he's covered for teams in the past, he's done really well. So that's that. Isaiah Yo was really awesome. If you picked him up, what we didn't expect is him to play 80 minutes, I suppose. Like he didn't do it often enough last year. And the year before, he, he when he was a top, you know, a, a decent gun, averaging in the mid 50s, he was playing a lot of 80 minute games in the middle. So he probably won't do that every week, guys. And I'm surprised he actually did it this time with uh, with them, you know, re winning really well by the end of it. I thought he might have got a bit of a spell, but he did not. Played the full 80 uh, and did great. Liam Martin was also someone that looked awesome. They used him a lot. You know, maybe. Maybe in terms of, he, obviously his fantasy scoring hasn't been great in the past when he's had big minutes, but this time here, he was used plenty, getting seven, seven tackle breaks, playing the full 80. Again, not something that we expected, um, even though in some of those games, you know, he's played a bunch of 80-minute games. Isaac Tago was awesome. He literally had the pretty much the most perfect game. Like, it was actually really awesome to see for a young fella. Yeah, you even look at the trials, he had 14 tackles for four misses and stuff like that. But that obviously was when the Panthers weren't going as well. My thoughts there was that he, you know, the, the Eagles would probably play a bit better than the Panthers and win. Um, and it was actually the, the other case. But Tago, I think, had the most perfect game possible. 29 tackles and one miss for a center was incredible. They, um, you know, the Eagles obviously went right a fair bit to his, um, to his edge so he could tackle. But he was really, really solid. He got a turnover tackle on um, to, Tommy, Tommy Turbo, which was awesome. On that try as well, he didn't have to do too much. Like he was outside the three guys who were all coming at one one mo in one motion, and he all he really had to do was you know, he didn't have to do a lot. Like he'd dive over and make sure he didn't drop the ball, and he was going to score. And he got three tackle breaks from that, um, which was really really cool. So yeah, if you if you started with him, that was awesome. You know, eighty five meters as well. Um, just did a bit of everything and got you sixty one. So he's going to make plenty of cash. DC did his thing. You know, to get fifty nine a beaten side, you're really happy with that from. You know, that price point, you'll, you'll take it for sure. You know, when we compare him to Turbo in a second, um, you know, 550 kick meters is going to be very normal for him. You know, you think about how much um, the Panthers had the ball and he still kicked for so much. So that was great. I'd be chorus out. Minutes might be somewhere around that 60 to 65, and that was kind of the worry with his scoring. And you can see he still only got a 59 with that try and a try assist. Just be aware of, of that for him. But he looked awesome. That was one of the best games I've seen from him in a while. Uh, so if you picked him up, you'd be pretty happy with that for sure. But just be aware those minutes will be around that 60-65 with Kenny on the bench. Trevojevic, Jakey, so 56, <laughs> he got 56 tackles. So yeah, it's what you're going to get from him. Somewhere around that 50 mark, depending how many tackles he makes each game. Yeah, so yeah, a few demerits in there, but an awesome game for him. He always tries so hard and is that link man in the middle. Dylan Edwards was incredible. 344 metres for 34 points there. A nice line break and a bunch of offloads was really, really good. Is that right? No, a bunch of tackle breaks. Sorry, four tackle breaks. Um, someone was commenting on the offload stats. You know, there's a bunch of like kick hours, four offloads, and, and eight points and stuff. So can anyone explain to me what's going on here as to why, you know, it, obviously not all of these were on the ground offloads. Yeah, hit the ground, sorry. So there should be a few extra points here on the offloads. It's the only one that hasn't changed, which is weird. So that's that. Anyway, 
We'll move on. Crichton with 55, so he had a really, really good game as well. Obviously a try, four goals as well, which is great. So when, um, you know, for Cleary being away from the game for this little period, five tackle breaks, 147 metres. So if he, can, if he can get around that 130 to 160 metres on a regular basis, he should be um, able to get a few tackle breaks and score well, but you know, two turnover tackles. Also, if you started both of them in your centers, you're having a cracking week and didn't have to spend any money on a gun. Yeah, you know, obviously this week, it's not gonna happen every time, but he was awesome. Bullymore looked okay, right? He had a pretty tough start to the game. He had an error, uh, a couple of missed tackles. I think he was on seven after 26 minutes. And then you, 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 Paul Carl Lawton comes out and, and cops a head knock and, and is out for the rest of the game. So. Yeah, Bully might not have played the 80, but you know, we're happy if he can get that nice runaway try. Uh, and, you know, 40, 50 metres from that, and he only ran for 86 total. is isn't great, uh, but he's going to make some start making some cash now with that 48, so that's all he can hope for. But I wouldn't expect anything crazy out of him unless he's playing 80 minutes on a regular basis. Fisher-Harris was solid, but that's kind of the scores you're going to get from him. If he's not getting any tackle breaks uh, and offloads, then somewhere in the mid-40s, with these minutes, and if he gets a few of them, you might get in the 50s. But yeah, somewhere around that 45 to 50 average, you'll see from him. Sorensen was solid off the bench, but the yeah the price was a bit awkward for him. Lockie Croker, again, this is what you're going to get from this type of player at that price point. He's not a keeper. He'll have games with 39, you know, 49 tackles to six misses, uh, and he'll have games with 45 to 50 points as well. Sean Kepi was decent off the bench, but again, too expensive. And, and Trebojevic, you know, Tommy Turbo there. With 35, so that was the biggest worry with him, obviously, being at that million-dollar price tag and being a fullback. If your team doesn't go as well or if they, you know, after how good he went last year, it was just an absurd season. He was incredible. He is their game plan, right? If you're on the opposition team, Panthers especially showed what they can do. You get on to him early. You don't let him run too much. The only time he, he was able to create something was through the middle, and that was off an offload from one of their boys that they made a little bit of a gap, and he came through the middle. So that's... That's what you're looking for with Trebojevic. He did get a try saver as well to get to 35. But you'd imagine that's going to be pretty much one of his lowest scores of the year just because he's in the game so much. 150, 200 metres regularly um, is at least going to be getting an assist or a try each game. And you know, for him to assist on that one try they scored, if they're scoring anywhere, two, three, four, five tries, he should be in the thick of all that and getting a lot better scores. But that's obviously a worry. And if you... If he is to get a couple of low scores in a row, he might be able to pick him up in the 800s pretty quickly. So that's that with Tommy. Olakowatu, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have picked him up after the injury he had. Garrick was in there. I suppose there's only a couple more to speak about. Spencer Lanu with the 25 minutes. So again, looks like that's going to be pretty uh, stock standard for him. Isaiah, Isaiah Yo might not get as many minutes, but you know, with um, with Eisenhuth going down pregame, he still didn't um, get bigger minutes. So again, I would be holding off on Spencer for a little while. Um, it'd be nice to see Kenny drop down in price a fair bit if um, if Appy happens to go you know, out with suspension or injury or something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, poor Carl Lawton. So we were you know, fairly high on him if he's going to get a starting spot and then he gets two minutes for a negative one. So his price is going to plummet pretty quickly. If you picked up Cooler with the nine minutes he played, so two points for him, nothing too exciting. He's just going to stay at the 220. Again, you're waiting for him to get a, a specific role in the side before you'd end up picking him up. So... That is that with the first initial uh, video of you know after round one. I hope that helped a lot, and um, you know appreciate all the all the subscribers I gained. Obviously with the um, with the prizes that I announced for the league. If you're in that um, and you are unsure about those prizes, I put a couple of posts on Facebook. I also spoke about it in the team reveal video. So if you can jump in and check that, um, that would be great. But yeah, it'd, you know, it'd be great if. Uh, next couple of guys if you are still new and you're on the fence about subscribing or if you're enjoying this con uh, content or not um just please let me know in the comments or, or or jump into that that would be really cool but uh have a good day guys it's going to be a nice fun night of two games of footy with the raiders and the sharks i think i'm tipping the sharks in this one i think the raiders um might take a little bit to gel with their new uh the new um new schneider basically without fogs i think it's going to be a bit of a tough one but they have a great forward pack and then the South and the, and the Broncos, we should see a win from the South there with Cody Walker leading them around. But that's it, guys. That's it for this video. We'll catch you in the next one. See you, team.